so far, you've heard an explanation about a company called Atomy that is showing vision and offering answers to many problems uh, that we are experiencing in this day and age. I dare say the answer is something you've all been waiting for. It really doesn't matter whether you fully understand Atomy or not. If your gut feelings are positive, that's more than enough. Let me assure you, if you thought during this lecture, um, how can I tell others what I heard today? You have nothing to worry about. Instead of troubling yourself to rebroadcast everything you heard, if your gut feelings are positive, just tell your people to have a listen for themselves. Atomy promises many solutions to social problems we are facing right now. Allow me to present you another point that you might need when considering this business. After hearing about these Atomy products today, if you think, well, even if I don't do this business, I'd still like to use them. It would really be a good idea for you to do this business. On the other hand, if you think, if I don't do this business, I won't really use these products. I know there are better goods than Atomy stuff. Then you should never do the Atomy business. Even if you did, you wouldn't succeed. Why? Because we all have a conscience. It would be extremely hard to sell something we don't even use. For those who conclude that despite not doing this business, using Atomy goods would still be more beneficial than using stuff from the supermarket, uh, internet shopping malls, or the home shopping network, then I strongly advise you to do this business. Once you make up your mind to do this business, your goal should be to succeed. If that success just means putting food on the table, it is not success in the true sense and you're wasting your time. You don't want to waste your time and must become successful. Surprisingly, there are not that many successful people out there. In general, people from birth to age 30 prepare in several ways for the rest of their lives. What kind of preparation? They go to school. From age 30 to 60, most people engage in gainful employment. Finally, from 60 to 90, they experience the twilight of their lives. So we go to school for 30 years, work for 30 years, and our final days are 30 years. An ominous rumor now says that humans may soon live up to 120 years, which presents many very serious problems. Something always accompanies our old years without fail. Our health deteriorates and illnesses follow. When sick and poor, your elderly years will become a slow, painful torture. We need a way to escape that sort of living nightmare. Statistics show that at age 60, after studying and working for 30 years, only 1% of the population is successful. In other words, they're well-to-do. 4% of them are financially secure and don't worry about putting food on the table. They are not rich, but they don't have to depend on others for their livelihood. 10% of the people continued to work, living paycheck to paycheck. 15% of the population passed away. The remaining 70% met their elderly years without money and without employment. This particular statistic is a bit out of date and from another country, so it might be a little out of whack for us today. Still, if you look around, there's about one rich person out of every hundred. And those who don't worry about putting food in their mouths are about one in 20. The remaining 95% of the people are basically failures in life. We need to do some serious soul searching as to why such a big proportion of the population is struggling and failing even after having studied hard and worked to death. 
One bright mind who made a sharp observation about this phenomenon was Carnegie, uh, who was born to an extremely poor family. He became a steel magnate and established the Carnegie Foundation. His philanthropic endeavors are still helping many long after his death. He gave serious thought as to whether he could become rich again, even if he were to be born again in poverty, or if becoming rich was simply a lucky fluke. He became convinced that no matter how many times he were to be born in poverty, he would always still become rich. He knew that he would have succeeded no matter what the circumstances had been. Carnegie came to the realization that while he discovered the secret to success, so many other people struggled and failed because they simply didn't know how to succeed. He became convinced of his findings. He wanted to share his secret to success with many people. One of his last endeavors that he focused on before his death was teaching people how to succeed. He truly wished to share the secret of success with as many people as he possibly could, and it became the goal of a project that he worked on for the next 20 years. The truth is, principles of success can't be decided arbitrarily. Carnegie's desire didn't create facts out of nothing. These principles have always existed, and he merely discovered and validated them. A principle is a law that always has consistent results. For instance, when A and B are added together, the result is always supposed to be C. When A and B are added together, if C sometimes varies, it's not a principle. A principle always results in something consistent and predictable when conditions are met. Principles are predetermined. Stephen Covey discovered this, and he called it the true north principle. In essence, the north direction is already fixed. It's not like we can just decide that this direction is north or that direction is north. It's not something we can just agree on. True north is predetermined and fixed. And it is therefore called a law of nature. For example, water always flows from top to bottom. Sometimes these are called the laws of farming. The laws of nature or the laws of farming must be obeyed to successfully do farming. For instance, to grow rice in the climate of Korea, seeding must be done in the springtime and the harvesting during the fall. You can never harvest the crop by seeding in the fall. Everything has to be carried out according to the laws of nature. Likewise, the principles of success are the same. They are predetermined, and when followed, people can succeed. You can never succeed by going your own way or deviating from the set laws of nature. Therefore, once we figure out the principles that were discovered, and proven by experts and successful people, most of us can succeed just like the farmer who does his farming by following the laws of nature. Sure, a few of them might go totally under because of some inevitable natural disasters. 4% of the people might not fully achieve as much as they had set out to. Still, when people take on farming, most of them succeed because they followed the laws of nature. The same can be said about living your life. As long as you follow these principles, over 90% of you here can succeed. In other words, most of you here will have a chance to become rich, making thirty to $70,000 a month. This is really not very difficult. It's as easy as farming. What is the first and foremost thing that a farmer does? Some people are saying he prepares seeds. 
Others say he buys a piece of land. Some people say he prepares the farming gear. Others still say he goes to the bank for loans. You talk about all kinds of things, but the very first thing the farmer does is think about how much of what crop he wants to harvest. If he decides to harvest ten tons of rice, he will plan to buy land or seeds according to the plan he has set in his head. Whatever plan he has in his mind will determine the following action plans of buying the land, various seeds, specific equipment, and the number of laborers he will need. If the farmer makes a plan in his mind to reap two tons of peanuts, how many peanut seeds, and how big a field he will need will be totally determined by his end goal of two tons of peanuts. This is why. I want you to consider in the plan for farming in your life what your fall harvest should look like. Likewise, what should your life look like in three to five years from now? Must be determined in your thoughts right now. Only when the ten tons of rice enters the farmer's head before it enters the silo in the fall. Will the result of the whole year's farming finally be loaded into the silo? If the farmer's head was empty during the spring, nothing will ever appear in the silo in the autumn. I guarantee such a phenomenon will never, ever occur. This is precisely why I am stressing that you must have clear images of yourself and the direction your life is going. In three, five, and ten years, and even at your deathbed. However, it is kind of complicated. Why is it complicated? Humans are complicated creatures. Let me show you what we are made up of. Humans have a body. We can call it flesh. Next, we have something called a spirit in us, and there is also a soul. Lastly, we are surrounded by an environment. To sum it up, humans are composed of these four elements, and the requirements for each of these four elements are all different. True success must have satisfied the requirements for all four of those elements in a balanced way. Only when they are carefully fulfilled will you truly be successful. To give you a better idea, let's look at flesh. What flesh needs, first of all. Is to be healthy. Second, to live long. Third, to live well. These are our desires. These are the desires of your flesh. If those requirements are met, will you all be living happily ever after? Not exactly. If we can simply define our happiness and success only with material matters, the children of the conglomerate CEOs. Would never leap out of high windows. The wives of the world's richest men would never kill themselves. In addition, the suicide rate in wealthy nations would be significantly lower than that of poor nations. Statistics don't paint the whole picture. Ironically, many more people commit suicide in advanced countries than in developing countries. What this tells us. Is that living a nice life doesn't necessarily mean having a lot of material wealth. Despite being financially wealthy, people still despair and even commit suicide. Well, that was the to live well part. Most people don't really distinguish spirit and soul, and often use them interchangeably. I'll tell you though that they need to be separated. Only humans possess a spirit. Animals don't have spirits. There is a notion of time in the meaning of spirit. God has also set eternity in the hearts of men, says the Bible. Eternity is a concept of time, and all of us have this desire for eternity. Furthermore, our spirit. Always seeks the spiritual world out there. The fact that we seek something spiritual is evidence that we are spiritual beings. 
Animals who lack spirits can never seek spiritual activities. That's why monkeys, even in this civilized society, don't worship gods or have ceremonial events for ancestors or anything like that. On the other hand, even the most primitive humans living in the jungles worship something spiritual. If some tribe believes there is a spirit, be it in the rocks, in the bones of their dead ancestors, or even in the animals, they will consider them as their spiritual angels. Again, our spirit longs for something eternal, something lasting forever. However, animals don't have such a thing. Furthermore, we have desires to love and to be loved. Soul is our desire to know about the unknown. So I can put this desire to learn down here with soul. Feelings such as joy, anger, sorrow, and pleasure belong to the soul as well. Lastly, we have a drive to contribute to our environment, which are both natural and social surroundings. You really want to live a giving life. The bottom line is that only when all four of these conditions are equally satisfied can you have a truly successful life. Interestingly, all four of these elements are not mutually exclusive, but actually overlapping and intertwined. First of all, flesh Flesh to live well. Spirit. Spirit to love. Soul. Soul to learn. And environment. Environment to contribute. You want all four of these elements to be harmonized because only when they are harmonized will you be able to exercise your passion. When they are separate, you will become cynical. For example, you might think, so what if we live well? To those who say, well, so what if we live well? They don't have love in their hearts anymore. The real reason you want to live well is for the people you love and care about. Your poverty makes your children crestfallen and despairing. Your parents desperately hope they will be able to take their last breaths seeing you live well. All parents want to see their children live well. Guys here, listen up. Your poverty is dragging down your wife too. Ladies here, what's wrong with living a cushy life? Your poor husbands wouldn't have to struggle so much. Tell your husbands, darling, Take a long rest. I want you to do from now on whatever you've always wanted to do. You've always wanted to go play golf, right? Go on and play golf every day. You've always wanted to go fishing. Now you can fish every day. Hey kids, you don't want to study, right? Relax and go on trips. What I mean by no studying is not to overly rely on formal education and not to push your kids to suffer in such a system. If you give your children a lot of space and freedom, they will find their own way. Another reason why we need to live wealthy is because of our children. See, if you can say, hey kids, you don't have to worry about making money. When it comes to money, I will make more than enough for all of us for the rest of our lives. Don't bother with working for money. How about living for others or doing something you've always wanted to do? Dedicate your life to something you really want to do, even if it doesn't make you a dime. Wouldn't it be nice if you could become a parent who could say something like this? Wouldn't your children welcome something like this? They would definitely welcome it. How cool would it be if we could say something like this to our children? If you leave them alone, they will do well making good money. How come? Because they will be doing something unusual or unconventional and won't have fierce competition, so they'll be able to do it leisurely. 
What jobs have fierce competition? All the traditional occupations that we all fight so hard for. Parents are fighting to death just for three to seven thousand dollar a month jobs. Your miserable children are working jobs with no guaranteed retirement. This is why you really need to change your old way of thinking and start living like humans. With this soul to learn, you realize that you need to improve your lives and become aware of the needy around you. I shed tears often while watching TV. My boys often catch me crying when watching TV together. Not too long ago, I happened to catch a program on TV showing Sudanese children in Africa starving, without much water to drink. I felt a sense of frustration for not being able to lend a helping hand at that moment. Even as we speak, those children are dying every hour. And in my heart, I have a dire wish for those children to remain alive until the day I can finally run to them. How I wish I could lend my helping hand to those poor children. You might not have realized, but there are so many people who are in need. Sure, there are people out there who we can help, but we are caring for those who are near us first as much as we can. Importantly, if you tell yourselves that you would be helping after becoming rich, even when that day arrives, you won't. You will be too busy spending the money you earned. We need to start helping out even when we make only a little and increase the help as we make more money. For example, Atomy began charity even at the humble beginning of the business. With as little as a few hundred dollars, we couldn't reach far, but we reached out to two kids, each in nearby elementary, middle, high schools, and college. Our charity began with paying for their tuition and making kimchi for the elderly in the community. We have been sharing as much as we can, even from our very humble beginning. This is what I think about contributing to society. The fact that we can offer opportunities for employment to the people who are here is our biggest contribution to society. That's the most productive and beneficial contribution we can make. Our next mission is to help out little children and the sick elderly who can't participate here with us. They need our attention. This is why we must succeed. We really want to help those people out. Once you become successful, your ability to help out the needy will reach ever farther. Don't you want to see those poor people resting in air-conditioned old folks' homes? Don't you want to provide them with food and cold bricks for heating? You really want to reach out to them, so you must succeed. To sum it up, your desire to contribute will drive you to succeed with this company. Sharing the same sentiment, the president of the company sweats up a storm lecturing. The president of a company. Is not usually supposed to act like this. Dear Atomians, I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. A five minute speech would definitely suffice. I'm still doing it. Why? I feel rewarded. Because of these things, you will have a more urgent desire to make money. Let's be honest. When it comes to money for men, unless they are doing something bad, they really don't need money. What men spend money on is usually suspicious things. It's completely harmless when women spend money. There are so many things women can spend money on. For example, necklaces, there are gold, pearl, and all other sorts. For pearl necklaces, there are one and two stranded, thick beaded and thin beaded, white pearls, black pearls, even pink pearls. For purses, there are long strapped ones, short ones, big ones, small ones. As they have to be coordinated by season and by color, women need at least 12 purses. Think about shoes too. High heels, low heels, pumps, sandals, and just whatever. Men only need a suit. That's all we wear. All they need is a suit and a few ties. Women need long dresses, short dresses, two-piece suits, sheaths, just you name it. They have a ton of things to spend money on. It's okay for them to spend money. It's harmless for women to spend money, but men shouldn't.
Again, we want to live well for the people that we love. You ought to arm yourselves with such a thought. Listen to me, men. I've got a bone to pick with you. Don't make your wives do these three things, cooking, cleaning, or laundry. Did you hire a maid when you got married? Why are you men making your wives do all this? Your wives have done enough cooking and cleaning. Now it's time for you to liberate them from such chores. Ladies, no more cooking, cleaning, or laundry from now on. Only when you stop doing those chores will the nation's economy really develop. What I mean by that is that you can hire your neighbor who isn't anatomy as your domestic help. That way you can decrease the unemployment rate. Doing house chores won't make you a better wife. It's the neighbor lady's job. You must make up your minds to become rich. What for? Only when you become rich, your beloved husband will feel at ease upon returning home. How so? Because you haven't worked all day doing chores, you will have energy to be nice and sweet to him. Because you worked to exhaustion all day doing those chores, you're too exhausted to care if your husband came home or not. This is how couples stop loving each other. In order to be romantic, you must be rich. You must learn and study how to love. Love needs art. Love is art and knowledge. Love is not simply those three little words. This goes double for those pathetic men who think they're so charming they can just use their wives. That's absurd. At any rate, in order for you to succeed, only when these three elements are harmonized will a true passion be produced. In other words, those who work half-heartedly have no love in their hearts. They are bad people. People with no love are wicked people. People who have no passion for their work are the ones who lack a desperate desire to succeed, have no fire, and no love left in their hearts. You must dig through that cold pile of ashes in your heart and rekindle the tiniest flicker of love left in there to make it rage again like a bonfire. That way, you can regenerate the earnest passion for success, and with that dire wish, you will finally be able to succeed. After all, what matters most is what you have in your minds and what attitude you have for your lives. You ought to have all four of these elements in the design of your new life. This is easier said than done. It's not that simple, as our lives are not that simple. Plus, you shouldn't take on life that simply. There are people who live their lives in a simplistic way. There are those who complain our compensation system is too complicated. They couldn't care less about a balanced life and only want to hear about how they can get rich quick. There are people like that. In fact, I see three of them over there. Let me tell you what these folks who have an aversion to complicated things have in common. They are all paupers. Money grows where things are complex. The money in simple places is all taken by others, so there's none left for you. Therefore, you must learn how to think in some advanced ways. We are endowed with this tremendous gift of thinking. Do you have any idea how atomy was built? What was it built from? Hmm? It was simply built by a thought. Seventeen people got together after riding in a beat-up old minivan and were told that this company would become a world-class company. They were told that they would be making $50,000 a month as a royal master. And further up, there would be crown masters who would receive a Mercedes. I told them I would give them $300,000 in cash. There is a mastership called Imperial Master who will receive $1 million in cash. Seventeen attendees and the president came in a beat-up old minivan. He couldn't afford $10,000 to rent an office, which took him three months to open and had only two employees. There were a president and a vice president, and he called himself president even with just two employees. How come? I knew from the get-go that I was presidential material. I was the president and CEO from the very start. 
Still clear in my mind, I had this vision of creating a world-class distributing company. And I followed the principle with good heart. There would be no reason I couldn't become big and successful. I had the gut and indeed I succeeded. Again, I'm telling you to direct a cinema in your head of the life you want to live. You will be given a form or a template. A template called so-and-so's life scenario will be given to you. And you will be writing it tonight. After filling it out, please turn it in tomorrow. Those who wrote one last month should write a new one. Why? Your cinemas change for the better bit by bit. Things change, so you must write a new one every month. The template looks like this. There's a big circle like this. And other small ones. What you will be writing here is flesh, spirit, soul, and environment. You must write each of them at least once. It's okay to write them twice. Like I said a while ago, to live well is to be healthy. So you want to write health here. Next, we want to live comfortably. For comfortable living, food, clothing, and housing is crucial. In most cases, people don't worry about food and clothes. I, I mean, mo honestly, people eat too much these days. So food has been taken care of. What about clothing? We all have a lot of things that we never wear. Koreans don't have problems with food and clothes, at least. Most people have an issue with housing, though. To live well really entails living a healthy life and living in a decent house. Next, these days we must have a car. No matter how good your house might be, you can't just travel by bus carrying heavy grocery bags. That's not really living well. That's why we want to have our own cars. When it comes to spirit, to love, you want to treat your parents nicely and ensure your children's future. About soul to learn, you can write about your kid's education or self-improvement. You should pursue your academic dreams if you have any. Lastly, for environment to contribute, you can write about charity or volunteer work. To live well should provide you with ample cash, too. Cash. Cash. After paying off all your debt, you want to have some cash in the bank at your disposal. Cash you don't have to worry about your husband finding. And you can freely give your parents $100,000 to $200,000. Wouldn't that be so cool? If that amount was $500,000 to a million, you would be in a great mood, wouldn't you? Right. It'll be neat to have some cash readily available. What else should be addressed? Right, travels and hobbies also belong in to live well. To contribute, you want to do charity work and donations. To learn, you want to educate yourself and take care of your children. To love, you want to take care of your parents, cars, housing, and health. Write down these sorts of things here. Of course, everyone has a different scenario. For instance, someone who is happy with their housing situation doesn't need to write anything about the house. There are markings here like on a ruler. You can rate yourself from 1 to 10 points. For example, give yourself some points on your health. Let's say you were born healthy, so you're not too concerned. Give yourself a 5. However, there are areas that you want to improve. That's what the remaining five represents. When it comes to housing, your dream is to either live in a 2,500 square foot apartment or a 4,000 square foot bungalow, but your current place is a 1,250 square foot apartment. In that case, give yourself a three. When it comes to cars, write down your dream car. What's your dream car? A Mercedes. What's your current one? Excuse me? A BMW 325. If so, you should be pretty satisfied with your current vehicle. A 325 is quite a decent automobile, isn't it? Caring for your folks? I don't think you've done much. You must have been busy buying your car. Your children's education. So far, they've been good. 
You could hardly do charity work, and cash is zero. You traveled and worked on hobbies here and there. Finally, link all these dots into one circle, and this is the wheel of your life. A small indented wheel is evidence that your life is not rolling well. On the other hand, if you can give yourself ten points for each element, the connected dots will represent a large and round wheel. When your wheel is small and crooked like this, you're going to stretch it out to make it balanced. Okay, then, if you want to get ten points in each field, what should you do about your health, your housing, your dream car, parents, children's education, charity work, donation, cash, travel, and leisure? You will be filling out those squares very specifically. For instance, you can't just write a nice house as your dream house or a big house. Let's say you went to a realtor and asked them to find you a nice or big house. They wouldn't take you very seriously. You want to make a clear decision as to your dwelling style: an apartment or a detached house. How big do you want it to be? You want to be as specific as possible. I advise you to write specifically and systematically. Let's say you are now living in an apartment on a long-term lease of three hundred thousand dollars, but you'd like to move into one at about. A million dollars that is two thousand square feet by a certain date. You will be writing that here. Also, you should write the value of the place. In other words, first write in as much detail as possible. Second, specify numbers such as prices or move-in dates. Please at least follow these guidelines. While you're sorting out things like this. You can see what you really want for your house. You may be living in an 1,800 square foot apartment now, but would love to move to one with five bedrooms, which means it has to be at least 2,500 square feet. Vehicles are next. I am currently driving a Hyundai Sonata, but I've always wanted to drive something better. That may be a Mercedes or a BMW. You might think the Mercedes S series is too big for you, so you want to downsize it to an SL, an SL 550. Write them all out like this. Some might write a Porsche. By doing so, your car should be running in your head. Next, think about how you can honor your parents. Here's the thing: please don't consider yourselves good sons and daughters because you gave them a little pocket money, like three hundred or five hundred dollars. That doesn't do the trick. You should actually take care of their entire living expenses. Most senior citizens need about two to three thousand dollars a month. You're wrong if you think the elderly don't need money. They've got plenty to spend money on. Regardless, when you are barely making ends meet, supporting your folks is easier said than done. The least you can do is call them and say hi. Anyone can call their folks once a week, can't they? They don't really expect a lot from us. We should be doing what we can now to our fullest and take steps towards our ultimate goals. The same goes for charity work and donations. Those who say later when I am rich don't usually keep their word. When becoming rich, they are busy shopping and are not interested in charity anymore. When people finally get rich, they forget about all those in need. People who are unable to help out those that are worse off than they are will never ever be able to give and share their wealth, even when they do become well-to-do. This is why you need to start thinking from early on how you can help out. In addition, you can become a truly rich person only when you can donate. Why? It means you are content and your life is fulfilled. On the other hand, while raking in money, someone who pinches pennies and doesn't donate is a pauper. Donation is a reflection of you becoming a truly well-to-do person. Again, you should be sorting and writing out your thoughts. For how you want to live your life in your head, as if directing a movie. While writing this, you should be adding up all these figures. This costs how much? This costs how much? This donation is how much? And so on. Your estimate will go up quite high. Would three thousand a month do? How about seven thousand? Impossible. With that kind of money, you can't have your dream life. This is why the thought of you making three or seven thousand a month cannot energize you. Some folks even profess their love for ordinary people's lives. To hell with ordinary people's lives! I lived an ordinary person's life for three years, and it sucked. 
After going bankrupt, I lived in a monthly rent home for $500 for three years. I felt in my bones how challenging it was to live an average life. Disavow yourselves from being an ordinary person. No one was born to suffer in poverty. No one has to wear a badge saying, I am poor. If you make up your mind that you will be rich and that you will be a leader in society, it will happen. How so? All the rich people out there became so because they dreamed about it. They weren't voted for in some election to become rich. If you tell the world that you will make it big, no one will protest against you. Even when I declared that I would be very rich, nobody went on demonstration. Sure, I was called nuts a few times, but no one actively plotted against me. That didn't happen. People left me alone thinking I would just stop soon. The same is true for you folks too. No one's going to try to stop you. So why not make the declaration that you will become rich? Proclaim that you will be making thirty to seventy thousand dollars every month. Say to your friends, it's your call whether you join me or not. Just don't complain to me later that I didn't invite you. Make a grand declaration from the top of your lungs. You make such a determination, then a declaration, and things will come true. I know there are still some people who stubbornly insist that it's impossible. Let me be honest with you here. When I was poor and I had this thought of becoming rich, I didn't really have 100% confidence in my heart that I could really make it. I was gravely ill which prevented me from doing any work at all. Honestly, I thought I had a 1% chance to succeed and a 99% chance to fail. Nevertheless, we must march on. Looking at that, that 1%, imagine that you are captured in a cave where all you can see is black rocks you might be able to see the tiny entrance from far away. The puny size of the entrance might be less than 1% compared to the area of the cave. Nevertheless, we can't just give up and say no to ourselves. We must move on, aiming at that tiny remote light far out there. We ought to walk toward that light one step at a time. That's exactly how I felt. Everywhere I looked said no to me. I even told myself, maybe I can't. Nevertheless, you must think that you will. When there's no hope, you must have hope. If you can't bring yourself to have hope, you are hopeless. Like I always say, when there is no hope, the only hope you can have is to have hope. When I was down and out, and struggling to death. I said that to myself hundreds of thousands of times. When I was full of doubt and felt I was headed down a dead end, the only hope I had was to have hope. If you can't even afford hope, there's only despair left to be had. However, I couldn't just throw in the towel. Why not? I had my family that I loved dearly. I knew if I gave up, my loving wife would despair. My children would be forced to go through hardship and my parents would be disappointed to no end. For the sake of my loving family members, I couldn't simply say I give up. I learned that in order to love, you have to live a good life. I married the love of my life after pursuing her for a year. We had lived pretty decently until my business went under. The tough period went on one year, two years, then three years. We lived on the money my wife brought home. Of the $1,500 a month, we used $500 for rent and took care of our two boys. We had to count every penny we spent and hesitated every moment while shopping. We struggled in that trying period for about three years. And this all led to more frequent quarreling, 
We didn't used to be an arguing couple. One winter day, I came home to a freezing house, so I said, Honey, turn up the heater. There's no sense in trying to save money while poor. Then my wife went on the offensive, saying, Do you think I'm not so cold that I want to max out the heater? If you had brought home a paycheck, we wouldn't be freezing right now. Your meager contribution is making us freeze this winter. She lectured that we had to be frugal, but men can be thoughtless, as you know. I said, there's no point in trying to save money when you're poor. In fact, you should spend as much as you can, because you can only spend so much. I really ticked her off, don't you think? Our quarreling became more frequent. And one day, she finally said to me, Dear, I want us to divorce after the kids graduate from high school. The thing is, she's a woman of her word. I heard her say that, and I felt crushed. I held onto her legs, and I cried like a baby. My love, please don't go. I can't let you go. I told her she could leave me when I'd be able to buy her a house. I pointed out she didn't have any retirement saved. Far from it, she barely had a few hundred dollars in the bank. Let me take care of your older years. Then you can leave me. Right, in a million years, she quit. Now, she has a great house and a bunch of money in the bank, yet she hasn't told me when she's going to be leaving. Financial insecurity tests our love. Because you want to be able to love and care for your loved ones wholeheartedly, you must think about a better life all the more. For you to be able to have such a great love, you must be determined to be better off. Start making detailed action plans and work to make them happen. Seriously, if I had given up in those days, what would have happened to my wife? There's a chance she'd have been just fine. The higher likelihood is that she would be having a really miserable life right now. She would be spending her remaining years poor and sick and having nothing to look forward to. That's something I could never, ever allow to happen to her. Even if the chance had been 1% for that, I would have risked everything I had to prevent it. Lo and behold, as I was hanging on to that single thread of hope and making steady steps toward the light at the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the cave slowly began to grow. When I finally got out of the cave, the whole world was open and bright for me. Even if you feel trapped in your heart, full of darkness and despair, and even if it's been that way for a while, you are now here at Success Academy. If you felt there is some kind of light, that there might be light waiting for you out there, that you dared to have hope in your life and saw a glimpse of possibility of making your dreams come true, you have to hang on tight to that tiny light as if your life depended on it. Then, at the end, you will see your dreams come true. The truth is that things don't happen with a 100% guarantee. Even if the odds are 100 to 1 against you, you should hang on to that 1% and change it to 2%, 5%, 10%, 50%, and finally 100. All successful people have accomplished it that way. After finally succeeding, you can proudly announce to the world that you have achieved your goal despite all obstacles. Every winner has a miserable past. The more miserable their past was, the brighter their success will shine. The reason you're going through such a miserable time right now is for later, when you finally succeed. Then you can say to the world that even though you were thrown into the most trying adversity out there, you picked yourself up and you made it through. Your challenges and hardship are all for the glorious speech you will be making as a winner. That's how I embraced my hardship. Even when I was driving that beat-up old minivan of mine, 
I thought to myself that the minivan days were numbered. And I would be talking about this ordeal fondly. Looking back on that minivan I drove in stride, I owned my situation and proclaimed that I would be giving out a Mercedes. In a way, it was a total pipe dream. Those who believed in that pipe dream and followed me were also pipe dream believers. How can you possibly take someone who was driving a minivan seriously? The driver of such a minivan saying that he'll be giving out a Mercedes and a cash prize of $50,000, $300,000, or a million dollars? Nonsense. Look, that pipe dream is now coming true. The same can happen in your individual lives. You can say, I failed in everything I tried. I'm not good at anything. I was a loser all my life. How can someone like me make $30,000 or $70,000 a month? That's ridiculous. Those ridiculous fantasies do come true all the time, and you can take my word for it. You must make your dreams come true. What for? Because your success benefits your loved ones, you must make it come true. Believe me, there are so many things you can improve on to achieve the balanced life you've always wanted to live. Again, to make necessary changes for that kind of life, first and foremost, have that picture in your head. You must start thinking of that life in your head. Paint a picture of yourself living in a dream house, driving a dream car, taking care of all the needs of your children, being able to support your folks all you want, doing charity work, donating to people in need, and traveling to dream destinations. Paint a new you living the life of your dreams in your picture. Write a script for that film. Write such a scenario for your dream lives and roll the camera for that film. What's great about this cinema is that you can change the story, setting, and plot. How so? You are the scenario writer, director, and lead actor. Depending on the movie you'll be writing about, your life will be remade in that mold. Believe it or not, it won't take that long a time. You can estimate three to five years. As long as you have the iron will to succeed, you can start from scratch, from the ground up. Among those who made it through this, none had a head start. And there's not a single doubt that all of you can do it. Let me quickly show you some examples of what your seniors wrote. This is how they filled this out. They made self-assessments and future plans in detail about health, travel, cash, children, charity work, supporting parents, and so on. Again, you should be writing this in as much detail as possible. Write down specific figures so that you have a practical idea about how to plan your dream life. After the scenario, you want to write another template as to how you're going to work on it. This is it. In this form, you can write down when you will become a sales master, and so on. This is how you want to fill out your template. Additionally, I'd like to see you come up with an implementation plan that details your individual action plans and goals. For instance, I will make sure I bring at least one or two new people to the weekly one-day seminar that takes place every Thursday in my local area. I will make that happen no matter what. You need to set your action plans like this and follow them through. Tonight, you will be building your dream life in your head and writing down your action plans with all your heart. Please turn in your life scenarios tomorrow and we will have some time to listen to them. Thanks for staying up so late. That's all, folks.